Sony's state of play last week gave us our first sneak peek at the next two substantial pieces of content coming from ShiftUp in their continued commitment to us, the Stellar Blade community, with their post-launch drops for EVE and the gang. With both the game's photo mode and the first true DLC being titled Stellar Blade X Near Automata being substantial updates to the core game in their own right, it would be a disservice to try and talk about both in one video, splitting the attention I'd like to give to each properly. I therefore will be putting out another video going over my thoughts on the Stellar Blade Near Automata mashup DLC in the near future, so we can focus here on photo mode and what we're set up to receive with it. Let's jump into the breakdown properly with Stellar Blade's upcoming photo mode. The preview showed us two different locations where photo mode was activated, one outside Spire 4 at Raphael Space Center and one inside of Zion. In the first segment with EVE outside Spire 4, going left to right across the photo mode UI, we see the tabs for the digital camera, the camera shutter, display, decorations, characters, and lighting. What I want to talk about first is the Characters tab, as we can see that we're going to have a handful of ways in which we can customize Eve and some of the other characters from the game with some great looking body poses and facial expressions. Starting at the top, there is the option to toggle what appears to be a maximum of four character options plus the drone. Eve, Adam, Lily, one more character titled Other Character, and the drone can all be displayed or removed from the field of view. Now, it would be great to be able to jump into photo mode at any point in the game and place these characters in and around Eve in their different environments at will, but unfortunately, I'm almost certain that's not what is happening here. Upon looking at the user interface, we can see only Eve, the drone, and the other character options are highlighted. Adam and Lily are grayed out. That's most likely because only Eve, the other character, and the drone are currently in the field of view. In addition to Eve and the drone, there are droid Natibas walking around outside the Raphael Space Center. The droid Natiba would be the other character within the field of view if the field of view is pulled back far enough. Right now, we simply cannot see the droid Natiba. So what I'm guessing is only characters that are in the field of view at the moment of jumping into photo mode can be toggled to be displayed or not. Meaning, the ability to insert Adam or Lily into this photo would not be an option because they are not with Eve in this moment of the game's story. Thinking back to Stellar Blade's campaign, Adam is currently riding his hoverbike back to Zion, and Lily is in the tetrapod piloting the drone. To add further evidence of this, if we move forward into the next example with Lily and Eve, these two are able to be grouped in Zion because there are several moments in the game when Adam and Lily walk throughout Zion at the same time Eve does. So as Eve, we would simply walk up to them, wait until they're a preferred proximity to us, then jump into photo mode. If this is the case, I get it, as photo mode is accessed while we are controlling Eve, so it makes sense that whoever is within proximity to her will be able to be within the digital photograph taken. However, I do want to push back a little bit because I think this is a huge missed opportunity. One of the coolest pieces of promotional images Shift Up put out was this image with Eve, Lily, and Taki grouped together holding up the number one. It was released once Stellar Blade dropped in the United Kingdom as the number one selling video game that week. I first saw this photo a few months ago and I thought it would be so cool to make group shots such as these in the photo mode that was spoken of when Shift Up went public with their IPO. If ShiftUp could provide us with the opportunity to create group shots separate to what is possible within the parameters of the campaign's story, it would fulfill a lot of fan service. I think one of the best things Stellar Blade has going for it is how well their character models and their overall design look. Any way to show all of the characters off would definitely be a win. Having a special photoshoot space where we can position together some very unique character groupings would go a long way for the community. Pairing together characters that never met in the main game, think of Lily and Taki, or having a grouping of all three battle angels of the game, Raven, Eve, and Taki. Grouped up would make for some truly amazing shots. Now, I want to divert from Stellar Blade for a moment because just a few days ago, the Death Stranding 2 team was giving a presentation at what looks like some convention. It's all spoken in Japanese and there is no English translation, so I'm not sure where this was. 
But in the presentation, a little before the one hour mark, Kojima starts talking about something that I don't think has ever been done before in other games photo modes. We see three female characters from Death Stranding moving around naturally as if they are in a real life photo shoot. It's as if the photographer told them to move around spontaneously and hold fun poses, or dance around and be playful. The player then snaps the photo and this is developed on an instant photo. At the end of the segment, we can see a handful of photos that were taken. Now, this is a feature that is completely new and fresh. It pushes this idea of grouping together characters in a digital photo shoot to the max. But doesn't this seem like something that would fit so well with all of the female characters of the Stellar Blade universe? I mean, come on, just imagine all of the angels, Raven, Taki, Eve, and even Lily posing spontaneously within a digital space. Now, I know this is definitely not what we're going to get with Stellar Blade's photo mode. Nowhere in the base game do we ever see an angel dance, so the Shift Up team is not about to add that animation for their photo mode. But even to simply have the ability to group the different Stellar Blade characters together in different fixed positions would be really special. I'm hoping Shift Up has given us the ability to jump into photo mode, toggle on other characters, and make our unique group photo shots possible. Again, this isn't what we're seeing here in this preview, but maybe we haven't seen everything that photo mode has to offer in Sony's state of play. I'm really hoping that's the case so we can make some truly awesome group shots of the Stellar Blade characters, all inspired from this promotional photo. All right, focusing back on what we did see, there are some great body poses with some fun matching names as well. Eve shifts into the yoga pose. Next, what is called We Did It. Eve jumping into the air in a celebratory pose. Too bad we can't quite see all of it though. Then we see the fist and palm pose, which gives off a martial arts kind of vibe. An assertive bring it on pose. Eve holding her hands out in front in what's called Wish then into Shutter Chance 2, which reminds me of a pose an all-female K-pop group would strike. I didn't know what Shutter Chance meant, but after a quick Google, it is the best moment to take a picture of a moving subject. Later on in this segment, we see Shutter Chance 3, so we know there are multiple Shutter Chances. And it seems they will each have Eve in an extremely captivating and timely pose. Eve then channels her runway fashion in the walk pose. It's a walk-off! <laughs> Next, a pretty straightforward clap pose, followed by Concerned. The preview is cycling through the poses quickly, so the Concerned pose hasn't reached its final position. In the next segment, Lily does the same Concerned pose, and we can see that it ends with her fist clenched up right under her chin. Next, we get a really awesome confident pose, and then we see the Slav squat, which is the Slovakian squat. We can't see her full position, but I'm sure it looks good. Next, we see a pose called Give Me. This and other poses in which Eve's arm or other body parts are stretched out towards the field of view are going to allow us to play around with the depth of field by moving the positioning of where the blur starts at different places along Eve, from her fingertips up to her main body and face. Warming up looks fun as we get a twist to Eve's torso that will allow us some unique looks at her outfits. Sweetie gives off more K-pop inspired vibes, and then we don't get to see the top of Eve hands in Cutie, but we do see Lily in the same Cutie pose in the next segment. So we do know her hands are holding up deuces. And then finally, we see another Shutter Chance, again, number three, which reminds me of when Eve eventually stretches in the game when she is left idle. As the preview settles on the what pose, we get to see some other features of photo mode being adjusted. The camera tab is going to give us the ability to roll or rotate our image and we'll be able to adjust the field of view to pull back or push into the scene. Now with the rotation adjusted, the preview goes back into the characters tab and we can see the preview toggle through Eve's expressions. And we see that we're getting some good ones. First, we see smile as we get a slight and innocent upturn of Eve's lips. Then a really cute sulk, which I'll come back to in a moment. We get to see a couple more expressions with sad, and then finally Eve winks and purses her lips with kiss. The preview comes back to sulk, and then we get to see some of the lighting options. We're able to select a light source. We see light 1 selected. I believe Spider-Man 2's lighting tab had up to three light sources we could select, and that game had a phenomenal photo mode, so I wouldn't be surprised if we could toggle on and off additional light sources. Further down the tab, we see some of the lighting options listed as 
target where we'll be able to position it on specific characters. The ability for the lighting source to cast a shadow, the range in which the light has, the color of the light, its hue, the amount of saturation the hue will have, the brightness of the light, and finally its intensity. Then we see the shutter tab highlighted and we see the ability to toggle on and off the depth of field, giving the image more pop. It is adjusted further as the preview continues. The next tab we see fiddled with is the display. We'll be able to toggle on and off HDR, adjust the exposure, contrast, saturation, hue, then adjust hue intensity once a particular hue of your liking is determined, and the brightness. Bloom is something that adjusts the intensity coming from light sources within the frame, so the light flashes from the turrets and the light fixtures on the outside of Raphael Space Center could have more luminescence by adjusting this bar. Additionally, the intensity of Eve's light components on her various outfits would be adjusted through the bloom as well. Cranking up the bloom to brighten the luminescence coming from Eve's light sources on her outfits and exospine will surely give us some cool ways to shoot Eve, perhaps in dark or low-lit environments. Under that, we see a sharpness bar that can be adjusted, and then a filter can be put on the entire image or specifically on certain characters. We can see how this works in the next segment with Lily and Eve, so I'll talk more about filters in a moment. Underneath the filters, we see zoom blur and a matching intensity bar, followed by dithering, chromatic aberration, and film grain. All three techniques will allow us to add more of an artistic flair to our digital photographs. Then we jump into the decorations tab and we can see a number of different frame options, including some decorative frames and different aspect ratios for a more cinematic look. Moving on, we don't see logos until the next Lily and Eve segment, but the final decoration option we see adjusted is the vignette. The photo is taken and we see the end result, this playful shot showing the impending doom of the three turrets locked onto Eve, ready to obliterate her. Lily and Eve are paired together in the next segment. We do get a look at a few new poses Lily cycles through. Hand heart, thumbs up, praise the sun, and give me. The other poses are repeats from what we saw in the previous segment of Eve outside the Raphael Space Center. Then we get to see Lily doing a hush pose, followed by the same clap we saw before, but Lily's clap is in the final position with her hands clapped fully together. Then we get to see the stretch pose similar to what Eve did when she stood idle in the regular game. Finally what is called V, with Lily giving a peace sign, fingers like a V straight out in front of her. Moving on to Lily's face, we cycle through just a couple of options, smile and laugh. The facial expression options are definitely going to bring a lot of life to the photos. Before adjusting their expressions, Lily and Eve definitely looked like they were channeling their inner mannequin as their faces looked incredibly still. <laughs> Next, we see Eve selected and we cycle through a few of the same poses, confident, stretch, clap and walk. Then we see a new one, salute and then one that we saw Lillian, but not Eve yet, with her hush pose. Both characters are toggled to look at the camera, and then we shift back to the decorations tab. The logo options have a mix of both official branding with the Stellar Blade logos and some in-game universe signage. It's cool to see the Freedom Liberation Alliance, Digger's robot dog Spotter get a sign, a fisherman in the Oasis logo that Clyde would no doubt be proud of, the fishing rod that makes the circular arc in the upper left corner is a great touch too. Barry gets a sign for his fish and wine stand. The treacherous Arctech facility gets a logo, followed up by one of the soda brands from the various cans we can collect. This one is called Cryo Original. And then finally, ending with the signage we see when entering Zion. A few more adjustments are made, including exposure and depth of field, until the preview jumps back into the display tab and the filters are seen being adjusted. We see some really nice ones, and even some that I haven't seen in other photo modes. Ash is the first and a great standout one, followed up by a moody looking nostalgia filter. Then next are the usual suspects of photo mode filters with cool, warm, and vivid. Then we get a unique feature in which the filters selected for the entire photo can be toggled on and off for each individual character, creating a little more pop to the photo. Some final minor tweaks are made and then the photo is snapped. All right, so what am I looking forward to most and what are some lingering questions that I have? Well, they go hand in hand. 
One thing I am really looking forward to about photo mode is having the ability to move the camera around Eve in an orbit to finally uncover all the secrets of her outfits. Eve's drip has some really intricate details and design features, and some of the outfits even have story-related text, content, and Easter eggs in sometimes difficult-to-see placements along Eve's body. Wave 2's alternate outfit has this funny-looking rabbit logo on the back of one of Eve's cheeks, and the black wave has text written on it, the Eden Protocol, that some in the Stellar Blade community have theorized hints at the story direction of future sequels. There's quite a bit more text written on other various outfits that photo mode is finally going to allow us to check out from the right angle. I actually spent a good amount of time trying to uncover everything about Eve's outfits already to help me piece together Stellar Blade's lore for some of my story-related videos, and it's pretty difficult doing so in-game. You can see me here trying to rotate the camera behind Eve in her Wave 6 outfit, and it's quite frustrating to try and read the circular text on one of her cheeks. As the text is too small, and I could never get the right angle without pushing the camera through the wall or other objects. And while in the game's menu, we're not able to push the camera in far enough to fully read the various texts that are on Eve's nanosuits. With photo mode, we should now easily be able to jump into it, swing the camera around Eve to look at all of the outfits from every angle, and learn more about the lore of the game, and perhaps uncover more easter eggs and influences the Shift Up team pulled from for all of Eve's outfits. Now, this is going to be a great opportunity for Stellar Blade lore and story enthusiasts out there. However, I have to talk about another reality that photo mode is likely to bring about, and that is related to the types of images that are inevitably going to surface due to the compromising angles that Eve could be subjected to. What is commonplace in photo modes is to allow the digital photographer to position the camera anywhere we want within the three-dimensional space to shoot the subject from various angles, front, side, back, from an upward angle or downward angle, etc. For Stellar Blade, my question therefore becomes, will we be able to fully control the camera and move about the digital space in an orbit around Eve? I ask this because when it comes to her outfits, some of them are revealing in a way that when shot from certain angles could result in untasteful or lewd images. Being that Stellar Blade is a third-person video game, we saw these angles of Eve all throughout gameplay, as our view was always from behind Eve. It was just simply part of the game's DNA, and even explained through the game's lore, with Tetra Star's Galaxy Allen being a fashion designer. Several of the polymer-based nanosuits he designed were part of his Exotic Sense collection. I know the Stellar Blade community is primed to be able to shoot Eve from any angle in photo mode, but I would not be surprised if there is some type of limitation. Perhaps we cannot shoot upward if we are underneath Eve, which would maintain an overall tastefulness to the photos. However, in the second segment where Eve and Lily are adjusted, when the game goes into photo mode, we see one frame change where the camera does rotate from a side to a frontal position. So this tells us we are going to be able to rotate the camera, but we just don't know how far. We never see the camera move on the horizontal axis more than this one frame jump. So the confirmation of an unlimited ability to move around Eve in an orbit is inconclusive. I'm really thinking we're going to have carte blanche and be able to move the camera within an orbit around Eve in any way we like. But I do think it's worth bringing up that we never see it move besides this one frame jump. Here's hoping we'll have complete freedom, but for now it's a wait and see game for this big question. I do want to add that I'm definitely okay with whatever Shift Up decides here. Since Stellar Blade's release back in April, Eve has started to become a video game icon in her own right. She just got an Astrobot skin, and with DLC and sequels confirmed, the sky's the limit for Shift Up's budding new main protagonist, and I do think Shift Up had to at least consider how their poster child is seen across the internet. And if there is a limit related to the point I am highlighting here, I definitely like to respect their wishes for how their heroine will be seen in the thousands, if not millions, of digital photographs that will arise once the game's photo mode drops. My last question is related to another thing we did not see in the photo mode preview. That is, what our ability to swap outfits, hairstyles, and accessories is going to be like. I imagine if we were going to have the ability to do this, it would most likely show up in the character tab. 
If we take a look back at that tab, we never see the bottom of it as there is an arrow scene right here. So I'm really hoping that just below the down arrow, there are sliders to adjust Eve's outfits, hair, and accessories. Eve's outfits, everything from her killer diving suits to the wild exotic sense collections from Tetra Star's Galaxy Allen, are such a core component to Stellar Blade and how we view Eve. I would be incredibly surprised if we didn't have the ability to cycle through Eve's outfits within a slider in the Characters tab. I think this is simply something we didn't see in the preview. Perhaps Sony only gave Stellar Blade that incredibly brief amount of time in their State of Play trailer, and cycling through the outfits would have definitely bloated it. I really think that option is going to be in the character tab, and because of that I'm not too worried about this one, but it is worth a mention since we didn't see this ability shown in the preview. Alright guys, I hope that video was informative and could give you a sense of what we're getting with Stellar Blade's photo mode. There were some great things we saw, and some potential things that may be a reality of photo mode based on those couple of things I mentioned that we didn't see. Still, I am extremely grateful to see what was shown so far. Eve's facial expressions and poses look like they're the real highlight here. Here's to hoping what we get is a polished photo mode with even more bells and whistles than what we saw in Sony's quick preview. Let me know what you guys think about both what was shown and not shown in the preview. I'm especially interested to hear what your takeaways were in the short preview we saw and what you're looking forward to most about Stellar Blade's photo mode. Thank you for joining me on this one. I'll be jumping down into the comments section below to keep up the discussion with you all there. I truly appreciate your time. See you on the next one, and may your memories live on forever.